Hi, it's Dina again, here with another tutorial for Cricut Design Space. Uh, from basics to beyond, what I have today is probably more in the beyond category. We're going to learn about patterns and why, why and how we would use them, how to upload your own pattern, or how to use them from the ones that exist in Design Space already. So for the first thing we want to do is we need to um, select an image and since we are creeping up on the fall season I decided I would do something with a pumpkin that would be kind of fun. And so we go to our image button and we are going to do a search for pumpkin. Well. And as you can see, there are a lot of pumpkins in here. And um, we're looking for something probably without lines, something very basic, without a face, just something kind of smooth um, and cute. And um, this, I think, is what I'm looking for to go looking for would be this one right here. So I like this one. We will choose this and insert it into our canvas. So here you can see that this pumpkin comes, it's got three layers to it. Um, it's grouped together right now. We can move it around all together as a group. And um, in our layers panel, we can see with it selected, all three layers are selected. And we want to actually ungroup this because the only we're going to change we're going to put a pattern on just this orange part here. So um, one thing that we can do first is completely eliminate the leaves. Um, there's two ways. There's one you can just turn them off. Any layer that you don't want to see or utilize, you can just click on the eyeball, and that gets rid of that layer. So if we click it here, that hides. Uh, the leaves, they're gone now. Or if you just click on that layer in the layers panel, you can actually go up here and delete it. And since we're not going to be using it, I'll just get it out of the way. So we are ungrouped. We can move these. Oh, we are not ungrouped yet. Ungroup our, we have two layers left. We're going to ungroup them. And now we can move these things around individually. So we know we're ungrouped. And we are going to add a pattern to this pumpkin and use it as a print and cut. So you could print and cut certainly this orange piece here um, on white cardstock. It would print that out for you and cut it out. But I thought it would be fun to jazz it up a little bit and put some sort of a pattern to it and um, show you how the patterns work. So you may question why, what's the point of the pattern? Um, what would you use a patterned pumpkin for? Well, you can use it for um, if you are making fall cards and you want to send out um, a fall card, you can put you can print up a bunch of little um, pumpkin stickers on the sticker paper or the or the printable vinyl, and you can um, add them to the backs of your envelopes of the cards that you send out. Or you can use them in a planner. You can also just use it as a design element for a card or anything else that you do with um, with paper crafts. And so we, I thought it would be good to show you how the patterns work. So this pumpkin itself came from uh, Cricut Access. Uh, if you're not a subscriber, there are there's another way that we can um, attain a pumpkin. And I'll show you that here in a minute. We're going to go ahead and start with the pattern here. So the first thing that we need to do with our orange piece selected, and uh, we see the box around it, and if we look in our layers panel, it's dark and it's the darker gray. We go up to this No Fill drop-down menu, and when you click on that, we're going to say we want to print it. If we were just cutting it, it would be no fill, but we're going to print it. 
So now when I click on, we want to change the color, so we should click on this orange square here next to the print, and we have all of our colors, and we have a drop-down menu in the color option, and we are going to choose pattern. So Cricut Design Space comes with a bunch of patterns already loaded in it. Uh, there, you could scroll for days and days and days. There's so many patterns in here. Um, <clears throat> what I like to use is the filter. We can filter through all of those, and I know I want something orange, so I will click on the orange, and all my orange patterns will come up. So if I scroll down a little bit, you can do everything from uh, basketball to stripes or polka dots. Um, the one I kind of like is this floral paisley print, so I'm going to use that one. So with that selected, you can see my, my pumpkin here has now um, got the paisley pattern on it. And if I click off of here. One thing you can notice is that there is this visible line right here. And um, I don't really like that. I want it's it's almost as if it, it's pieced two pieces of the pattern together. So I want to be able to um, eliminate that line. So I'll just increase. You know, we can edit our pattern to to eliminate that. So we select it again. We go back up here to the color box option, and we just hit the edit pattern button. So here's our pumpkin. Here's the line that I talked about, and you can see that we can actually scale this pattern. So there's the up and down arrows or a slider bar. I like to always start with the slider bar. Uh, it can be a little bit sensitive and it does have a bit of a delay. So just slide it a little bit and see what happens. And there you see I've gotten rid of that line. It just increases. It's like a zoom on the pattern, so it zoomed in a little bit. The other thing that you can do with this pattern is uh, if I wanted to bring this flower right here down a little bit so that I could see the top of it, I could move that down with the vertical edit button. And by just clicking the little arrow, I can move it down until I thought it looked good. Uh, here again, I can see another piece of the line. So I'll just go back up with it. Um, but you can move it around, you can change it horizontally, you can flip it. So if you pay attention to this paisley right here, if you flip it, it'll flip to the other side. Um, you can flip it um, up and down. So there's a lot of options. You can rotate it so many degrees. You know, you type in what you want, 45 degrees or whatever, and the whole pattern would shift. So there are a lot of option, options for the edit pattern menu, but this is this looks good to me, so we're going to close out of this box. And here is our pumpkin. So um, we still have the stem here that's separate, and I wanted to change the color of that, so we go back up to our color square. And I'm going to go into the advanced because I want to see more options for color. And then I just click into this kind of, I want to make it kind of a teal color. So I click anywhere into that area and I want to see if I can match something in here. So I'll probably slide this bar down just a little bit, make it a little brighter. And just click my mouse around until I see something that looks decent, that's similar to what what the uh, blue in here looks like and when I'm happy with it I just click outside of that box and I've changed the color so what I want to do is just move it down like it's connected like so and now all we have to do is uh, to be able to print and cut it needs to be in one layer we still have two layers here so we need to combine these into one layer so what we do is we select all because this is we only have two things on our canvas. The easiest way is to select all. You can drag a box around the two pieces. That also selects all. You can see two layers right here, both highlighted. So everything is selected 
and then we go down to the bottom of our layers panel panel and we hit the flatten button and when we do that that changes it right here in the layers panel we have one layer it is going to print and then it is going to cut this pumpkin and stem out so the next thing that we would do if we were ready to use this um, say for a card for example is we would um, want to print it out so we go to well we go to make it and you'll see this black box that's printed around it that's a registration mark and that is for the Cricut to actually um, know exactly where this pumpkin is so it knows exactly where to cut so the lights gonna come on and it's gonna scan this black line in several different spots around here it does take a few you know seconds of time to maybe a minute or so and it scans all the way around this and then it knows exactly where to cut so um, with that said then we would go to continue and it's gonna tell us to send it to our printer I'm not gonna print it right now but I do want to show you what happens when you do say I'm going to send it to printer so you click on send to printer and it's showing you you're making one copy there's the printer and it adds this auto bleed you can turn bleed on or you can turn bleed off for this project it's easiest you don't see a difference when you click on it like this because it's too small when it's printed you will see a difference it's going adding bleed adds a blurred line all the way around this pumpkin so that when it goes to cut it just gives that little extra um, it, it helps to eliminate any of the white cardstock being cut so it is um, a feature that helps you to get a good clean cut and I do recommend calibrating your machine if you have not ever for print and cut um, and that way you'll get the best the best cut for your project and from here once you have your bleed on you would send it to your printer and you would be all set to print out and then you would take it load it on your mat just like it shows here and it would prompt you to feed it into the machine and you'd watch it do its magic so we're going to close out of this because we're not going to print it but you see how the pattern works we're going to cancel this cut altogether and I want to show you two different things. One is if you do not have access, how you can get a pumpkin. Um, I did happen to notice when I was on here earlier, if we go into images and we search for pumpkin, there's a filter button over here. And if you click on that, we can go to the free and all of these images are free. I have pumpkin in there so it actually has a pumpkin if I didn't have the pumpkin selected you can see all of these images that are free to anybody who is in design space right now and right now they change usually every week maybe every two weeks schools about to start so there's a lot of um, stuff that has to do with um, teachers and school and things like that uh, but I did notice when I scrolled through here there was a pumpkin in it and it was free to use and it looked very similar to the one that I had the difference was that it had the stem already attached which is kind of nice but uh, it would put the the pattern on that stem but we'll go back and we will type in pumpkin again and search for that free pumpkin so that is one option that you could use and load that up to your um, canvas. The other option that I would like to show you is you can actually go and do a Google search for uh, a, a pumpkin silhouette. So if you open up a new tab, um, I just I use Google so I'm gonna search for a pumpkin silhouette and then I look under images and you have a lot of options here um, you want to look for something fairly high res um, so when you scroll over it it tells you like this one's 841 by 720 
that's pretty good resolution. This one here is an 840 by 677. That one's good resolution as well. I would try to stay above, I would say, above 300. I'm sure it can do probably less than that, but I prefer to keep it above 300 myself. So you just find um, you know, something that works for you. So for example, I would um, just right click this, save this image, call it a pumpkin. I do like to just save it on my desktop because eventually I go and delete it and it's easy for me to find. So I save it there. Then we go back to design space and we go to upload an image. And when we do that, we click the upload image button and we browse. I put it on my desktop. I called it a pumpkin. So let's see if I can find it in here. Sometimes it takes a minute to pop up. Make sure I am on my... This mouse is different, so I'm going backwards with it. And if all else fails, we type in pumpkin. Oops. All right, what are we doing here? Pumpkin. I seem to have lost my pumpkin. Maybe I didn't pay attention and it went to my downloads. All right, let me try this again on my desktop. Okay. Desktop. Okay, so I seem to have lost it. Let me, let me go back and try that again. Go into Google. I'll just choose this one here. So I right click, save the image as, and then I will call it pumpkin. Oh, I see where it went. It went into my craft ideas folder. Okay, so I will just cancel that out. Go back into design space. Hit my browse button. And on my desktop, I have a folder called craft ideas. And there's my pumpkin. So we're going to load this thing up, we'll open it. It's a fairly simple image, so if I click on the simple, then hit continue. So when you get into this area here, you have to kind of edit this a little bit. If we were to just continue, we would basically be cutting out a square. So we want to just cut out the pumpkin. So what we need to do is go up here to this, uh, it's called the, the magic wand right here. It's an eraser. So with that darkened in, we want to erase all the area around the pumpkin. So we just, this little crosshair pops up and if you just give it a click, it turns everything to this blue and white checkerboard and that's what you're looking for. Um, we've basically eliminated the white background we just have this, but if you've noticed, there are some words down here. Um, and I did take this from Google, so it's just a, um, it's for personal use only. I'm not selling anything with it. So I would, to get rid of that, we go up to the eraser here. And the eraser has a slider bar, so you can see how big it is. Once you put it on the screen, this looks like it would work for me. So you just click it and you just run right over it with your uh, eraser with your mouse and now it is gone. Click preview to see what we've done. What will it look like? That looks perfect to me. So then we're going to go on to continue. So we have the option of a print and cut or just a cut file. Uh, some people will tell you to save it as a print and cut every single time because you can always change what you're going to do with it in 
uh, design space. Uh, we are actually going to use this as a print and cut, so that's the way I'm going to save it. It's called pumpkin. You can put tags, Thanksgiving, Halloween, fall, whatever you would want to help pull it up. I'm just going to leave it alone and save it. And once I save it, then it is in any image that I have uploaded into my design space. So I want to choose this one. I insert that. And now I have that pumpkin to be able to um, make it a little bit bigger. It's just a single layer and we want to add a pattern to it. So we go up here. It's already set to print so we click on the little box next to it. This is the original artwork but we want to add a pattern. Click on that and um, there was a pattern I had downloaded earlier I thought was kind of cool. So I chose this one. And you can see now we have this really cool wave pattern in that pumpkin. And we would, it's already set to print. If you look in the layers panel, it's going to print and cut this just the way that this one did. And that is how we can use patterns in design space. And that can be with any image, you can add a pattern to it. Um, it would mostly be for print and cut purposes. So uh, we're going to, let's see, I'll leave that one there. We'll delete this one and this one. And what I'd like to show you is how to actually upload a pattern, just like we uploaded an image off of Google. So if we go back to Google and we do a search for um, pattern backgrounds or free pattern backgrounds and we see there's just a ton of them. There's the one I uploaded earlier today. So there's a lot of different backgrounds in here that you can look for. Um, you can filter them out. Um, you know, simple blue, geometric, high res, um, trendy, cute. So uh, anything in here that you like, you could just scroll down until you find something that you do like. And when you find something that's fun, hover over it, see what it looks like, the resolution on, on there. And if you like it, you can um, just right click, save the image as, and then call it leaf pattern, and save it to the desktop. At least that's where I do, because I will remove it later. And then I save it. Go back into Design Space and we go back to the Upload button. And instead of uploading an image like we did for the pumpkin, we are going to upload a, upload a pattern fill. So we click on that, we hit the Browse button, and we look for our leaf pattern that we just downloaded. Open that up. And there it is. So now it's called leaf pattern. You can look under themes and tag it with something. So this is kind of, um, let's see, I saw a, thought I saw nature in here or something earlier. Um, it's kind of fall looking. You could tag fall. Um, you can tag as many as you, as you wanted. Um, and then the, the really good thing that you should do is um, there's styles. It's kind of floral. We can click that. Uh, but the most important, I think, is to click the color. So this is green. Click on that, and then you save it. And then once it does its thinking, we go back to so our canvas. There we go. So we go back to our canvas. We click on this pumpkin. We want to add that new pattern to it. We click on the no fill and we're going to make it a print. And then we go select this box, drop down to pattern just like we did before. 
It's the first one we just loaded up, so it happens to be right here, but you could always filter for the filters that we put in, the fall and uh, whatnot. And there we have the pattern that we uploaded from um, Google. And, um, you know, I do see a line in here. So again, we can go in and we can edit that pattern and, and change that a little bit to where we don't have the line. It's thinking a little bit here. Let's see what we've got. Let's try that again. Let me move this thing over here for now. It's interesting. We have two. It must be two layers of something. What happens if I turn that one? Ah, there's a shadow layer. So this pumpkin happened to have a shadow layer on it. That was because it came from Design Space. Okay, so um, so we click on our pumpkin, go back to the pattern, we'll let those load, hit edit pattern and see if we can get this thing to come up here. I'm not sure why it's not, but you can change it a little bit, check on it, and I can already tell that looks better. All I did was increase the size. I couldn't see the preview of it, but if you click off of it, you can see it, and I think it looks cute. And then you could use that as your sticker, or you can use it on a card. Um, you use printable vinyl um, or the sticker paper, and I think it would be a really cute thing to do. So that is why I say this is a little bit of the beyond. Uh, it's more of an advanced feature uh, once you're more comfortable with design space, but if you can follow along with my tutorial and you know pause it wherever you need to to um, catch up and figure out what you're doing on your own and uh, be able to make really cute, I mean the, the possibilities are endless um, with what you can do because this can be any shape that you, what even if it's just a shape out of the shapes menu you can do it too or anything that you've uploaded from the internet. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I um, hope you find it helpful and I hope you have a great day. Thanks.